Okay, so today uh, my schedule is to talk about the vector addition and the subtraction. And then I will uh, talk about the uh, displacement and the velocity. And then I will spend a couple of minutes talking about the homework you uh, yesterday. So when we talk about the addition and the subtraction, here is uh, kindergarten mathematics. If we have two number and we want to add them or subtract them, we just need to um, add the number or subtract the number and keep the same unit. Uh, that's very easy. But if this number has a vector, has a direction, how do we uh, solve this problem? I have an example. There is a river and the boat uh, is in the river and the, the water has a constant speed. That's a four mile per hour. This is the speed of the water. And for the left boat, if the engine has a speed of three mile per hour, this is the speed of the engine. The engine gives the speed and uh, um, the direction of this boat and the direction of the water are parallel. Then in this case, what's the net velocity, the net speed, the net speed of this boat? We need to add them. So we have the speed of the water plus the speed of the engine that will be seven mile per hour. Okay. This is uh, uh, the net speed for the left boat. For the right boat, if the velocity here is five mile per hour, but the direction is opposite to the speed of the water, then we will have the net uh, speed for the right boat is five minus four because they uh, have different direction and the total will be one mile per hour and the direction go to the left, right? And for the right one, the direction go to right. So that's a different uh, for this two case. Um, they have the parallel speed or anti parallel speed. Then this two speed um, give us different net speed. Then we have another question. If they are not parallel or and the parallel, they have the angle in between. For example, if the boat wants to uh, go across this river, how do we get the net speed? So if the engine gives the boat three mile per hour to uh, go to up, if the speed goes up, is three, and the speed of water is four, then the net speed will give us a direction in this direction. This is net speed. So for example, if the boat start from here and head, heads up and the water gave a speed to the right, then the trajectory of this boat will be like this. So eventually it will go to somewhere um, on the other side here, not here, because the uh, speed of the river. Right? So the question is, how do we calculate the net speed? The net speed is what and what's the direction? Can we quantify the direction? So to answer these questions, we need to use um, the parallelogram rule for the uh, for the vector addition. Here I show you an example. So the river gives the speed four mile per hour to the right. This is the speed of the water, and the speed of the uh, the boat is here. So three mile per hour goes up, and we just move these two vectors with the same original point, the same starting point, and trace this two vector as two sides 
of a parallelogram. So we draw a parallelogram like this. And these two vector are uh, either side of this parallelogram. And the length of each side are linear proportional to the four and three. So the length of this side is four, the length of this side is three. Then we draw um, the diagonal. This is a diagonal. And we measure the length of the diagonal. We find that the length of the diagonal is five. So the net velocity, magnitude of the net velocity is five mile per hour. And the direction is the direction of diagonal. So let me give you a quick summary. How do we use the parallelogram rule to calculate the vector addition? So we put these two vectors at the same starting point, starting point, and with the proportional length. So if this is a four, this is a three, then the length of each side either side will be four and the three. And then we draw a parallelogram and we trace the diagonal. Then the diagonal direction is the net direction of the addition vector. And the magnitude of this new vector is the length of the diagonal. And we can also calculate the, uh, the strength of this vector because we know this is a, a rectangular triangle. So we can use the square root, three square plus four square, and we get five. That's the magnitude of the diagonal. Okay, so this is um, how we use um, parallelogram rule to calculate the vector addition. Then the next question will be, if we have many vector like this, we have many vectors. And how do we calculate the total addition? We have to do the addition one by one. For example, if I pick up the first and the second, then we get a new vector. Then we use the new vector, add with the third vector, then we'll get new vector. And we use this new vector with one more vector that will get another vector. So until I add all the vectors, then I will get the total vector. But this is not an ideal way we are going to calculate the addition because this is too slow. Can we find a, another simple way or um, some quick method to get the final result? So this is our question. If we have many vectors, can we get addition very quickly? Then to answer the question, we have to um, talk about the coordinate of the vector. So for example, here I have a vector A. This vector A, um, I put, I move the starting point to the original position. So I put the starting point of the vector A to the original one. Then let me find out the ending point of this vector. The ending point of the vector A has a coordinate. The X component is six. The Y component is two, right? So we can use this vector. Hold up. Let me use a x vector plus the a vector y. Because we know the parallelogram, we have vector a equivalent to the a x plus a y. Right? This is the parallelogram rule. And we know um, if we have the unit vector in the x and the y, here, I have a little i here. This is a unit vector, uh, which is per, uh, parallel to the x-axis. I call the little i. 
So the AX actually is six times of the I vector. I is a unit vector. The magnitude is one and the direction is parallel to the X axis. So I can write the vector AX as six I. And the same thing, the AY could be written as two times the unit vector in the Y direction. That will be the two times the little j. Okay? The j is a unit vector in the Y axis. So in this case, we can um, simplify uh, this notation into a column, two number in the column. The first number is X component, six, the coordinate of the vector A, and the Y component is two. It's also the Y component of the vector A. So this is just a notation. Okay? We call this a column vector. We just write down the coordinate of the vector A in a bracket. So we have this notation. 6, 2. Okay, if we have the coordinate of the vector A, then the next one is, what's the magnitude of this vector? So the magnitude of this vector, we use a formula, magnitude of the vector A will be the square root X component and Y plus Y component square. So that will be 6 squared plus 2 squared. So we get uh, square root of 40. That's the magnitude of this vector. And how do we calculate the direction? The direction is defined as an angle. The angle between the vector A vector A and the positive x direction. So that's uh, the direction, how we define the direction. Then the direction, we can calculate the tangent theta and it will be the y component over the x component. That will be six over two, three. So if we know the coordinate of every vector, then we can calculate the magnitude and the direction in a very simple way. Okay. One more thing I want to talk about is the unit vector for the vector A. Unit vector. So unit vector, as I define here, unit means the magnitude is one. It's one. If the magnitude is one, then we call this vector as a unit vector. But the direction depends on whose unit vector we're talking about. If we're talking about vector A's unit vector, then the vector U, A's unit vector, that will be the, the yellow vector here. I choose here, um, the yellow one. The yellow vector here has a unit, uh, has a magnitude of one, and the direction is parallel to the vector A. So if we want to calculate the vector A is a unit vector. We have the formula here. We use the coordinate of the vector A divided by the magnitude of the vector A. So the coordinate of the vector A is six, two, here, six and two, and divide by the magnitude, that's uh, uh, square root of 40. So six over square root of 40, two over square root of 40. That's a coordinate of the unit vector for the vector A. I. Okay, so this is uh, the notation of the vector. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have more questions, let me move on. So here, let me talk about um, the addition. If we have two vectors, vector A and vector B, and we want to add them together. So for the first method, 
we just need to draw a parallelogram. So we put the vector A and the vector B at the same starting point here, the starting point. Then I draw the vector A and vector B and I draw a parallelogram. This is a parallelogram. Okay, then I trace the diagonal. The diagonal has an ending point here. This uh, vector has a component of eight and seven. So this vector gives us um, the coordinate as eight, seven. Then if we know the coordinate of vector A and vector B. We know the vector A is 6, 2, and the vector B is 2, 5. Then how do we get 8, 7? So from the diagram, we know the new vector, the diagonal, actually has x component. x component is this one. It's x component for the new vector, the addition vector. And this component is equivalent to the x component of a plus the x component of b. x component of b is two, right? This yellow, uh, this blue line, two here, this blue line. So this vector has a length of two. So I just move to here. So you will find that the x component of this diagonal is equivalent to the x component of a plus the x component of b. The same thing if we check the y component for the diagonal, you will find that the diagonal is equivalent to the y component of b plus the y component of a. The y component of a is two. So two plus five is seven. So that will give us a hint that if we want to know the addition of two vector, we just need to know the x and the y component for each vector, 6, 2, 2, 5. Then we add them. Uh, we, we just need to add their x component and the y component separately. So we have 6 plus 2 equivalent to 8, and 2 plus 5 equal to 7. So this is very easy. If we want to do the subtraction, if it's a minus b, same thing, and we just need to use six minus two and the two minus five. Eventually we get the subtraction is four minus three. So let's check if the subtraction is right. A minus b will be a minus b. I use another color, orange. A minus B is this one. The orange factor is A minus B. Okay, the A minus B, let's check the X component will be four, one, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's correct. And the Y component is minus three, that means the direction goes down. So one, two, three, right? So that's four minus three. Yeah, that's easy. So if we have many vectors, let me go back to the original question. If we have five vectors and we want to do the addition, we are going to sum them. We just need to figure out the uh, column vector for each vector. What's the coordinate for each vector? So for the first one is four, five. Second one is this third one, fourth one, the fifth one, and we write them together and sum the x component, four minus two minus three plus two plus two. Sum the y component, five plus five minus one minus three. Then we get the final vector, that's three, six. So if we are going to draw this final vector, that will be the three, three here, three, Regional points here, okay, and a six, six uh, is out of the page. Here is a six, so the ending point here. 
So the new vector, this one, that's three, six. Like that's the sum of this five vector. Okay, that's all about the vector I want to talk today. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have question, I'm going to move to the displacement and vector. So next one, I'm going to talk about the displacement and the velocity. Um, here, when we talk about the displacement and the, the velocity, we have another um, parameter we call the distance and the speed. So they have different physical meaning here. I want to emphasize the difference. The first one, if we talk about displacement, this is a vector. For example, if we have a point, we have a mass point move from position A to position B with a meander path. Then when we talk about distance, actually that's the distance of this curve, the length of this curve. length of the black curve. And that's the distance. So it depends on the trajectory, the distance will change. But displacement is a constant. It's a linear contact, which has to connect the point A to the B by a linear line. So that's a displacement. The displacement is the length of the green curve, green line, green line. So that means the green line is always smaller or equivalent and to the black line. So if the path is straightforward, then the distance is equivalent to the displacement. But the most of the case, the distance is larger than the displacement. And one more thing I want to emphasize is the displacement is a vector. So for the green line, there is a direction. If the point move from A to B, the displacement is in this direction. So the displacement is the shortest distance from A to B. So we have displacement. larger or smaller or equivalent to distance. And distance is a scalar. Okay, that's the difference. Then let's talk about the velocity and the speed. If we want to know how fast is a point move, we have a point moving from A to B. The same thing, if we use the distance, black one, the distance divided by the time of the travel. So the A to B with any trajectory, the distance divided the time will be the speed. Okay. If we're talking about the velocity, that will be the displacement. divided by the time, that's a velocity. Okay. <clears throat> so the velocity will be red one. So the displacement from A to B here, so that will be displacement over time. And the distance will be this one. So we have the speed is always larger or smaller, or larger or equal to the velocity. So the velocity is smallest the speed. <clears throat> okay. And the velocity has the same direction um, as the direction of the, of the displacement. So displacement is from A to B. And the velocity 
also has a direction from A to B. Direction A to B. Okay, then that's the difference. And if we can want to know the average velocity, we need to use the average displacement by uh, the total displacement over the time. And now let's see if the something move from A to B with a constant velocity. We draw uh, a curve of displacement. Displacement, let me use X. If this point is moving along the X direction, A to B, use X direction from A to B with a constant velocity. Then the X and the T curve will be start from some point, then move linearly to the position of the B. So this is A, this is B. Okay. This is a T A, T B. This is a coordinate of A, coordinate of B. Then if the speed is a constant, we have a constant velocity, then the velocity is defined by the change of displacement divided by the change of time, the duration. So we have the displacement that is xb minus xa divided by the duration tb minus ta. This is only for constant velocity. So if the velocity is not a constant, then the curve is not a linear curve. For example, that will be a curve like this. So from this curve, we know the velocity is not constant. If we still use this calculation, we won't get the instant velocity. What do we get? is an average velocity. So in this case, this calculation gave us an average velocity. If we want to know the instant velocity, instant velocity, we have to do the derivative. That means if we want to know the instant velocity at this point, then I need to draw a tangential line of this curve. Okay, then measure the slope of this, of this line to get the angle of theta. Then the slope of this tangential line will be tangent theta. The tangent theta is the instant of velocity at this time. This is the instant of velocity. So if we write the instant velocity as a, a mathematical formulation, we have the V equivalent to the derivative of X displacement divided by dt. This is a derivative. If you learned the uh, calculus, you should be familiar with this formula. This is a derivative. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the VT curve. Yeah, VT curve. Just now I tell you the XT curve. Now, if I have a velocity as a function of time, and if the velocity is a constant, V is constant, then we will have a curve like this. A flat curve. Now we say the um, the speed doesn't change or the velocity doesn't change. And if we want to know the displacement, in this case, the displacement actually is equivalent to displacement is equivalent to the velocity times the duration. The velocity is V here, 
let me use v1 the duration is delta t so if you just check the ge uh, geometry you will get that the area of this uh, rectangular actually is a displacement right this is equivalent to the area between the VT curve and time axis. So the same thing, if the V is not a constant, we have any curve like this. For example, like this, and the velocity increase, then decrease a little bit, then decrease as increase. Then how do we calculate the displacement during this motion? So what we need to calculate is the area of this curve. So the area of this curve is the total displacement. The displacement is equivalent to the area. And the area in the calculus is actually the integration of this curve. The integration, suppose it's from the t1, t2, and we can write this uh, area into a formula that will be the integral from t1 to t2 of the vt curve times dt. This is the integration of the curve. So the same thing, um, if we uh, do the integral of the VT curve, we get the displacement. And uh, we can also think about that the displacement is area of this curve to the T axis. So one more thing I want to talk today is the acceleration. Uh, if the velocity doesn't change during the motion, Velocity doesn't change. Then we see this is a constant um, or uniform speed motion and the acceleration is zero. But if the velocity goes up, the motion speed up, okay, speed up, then we will have a positive acceleration. And if the velocity goes down, speed down, the acceleration is negative. So we define the acceleration as a change velocity over change time. And the velocity acceleration is also a vector. The direction of the acceleration is the direction of the change velocity. So if we have the VT curve, we have the velocity, the time, and we have a curve like this. Then you will find that, uh, hold on, let me use another curve. I gave you a speed up curve and a speed down curve. Okay. If a motion like this. So for the first part, if we check the slope of the VT curve, slope, any point has a positive speed, uh, positive slope. So tangent theta one, the slope of VT curve is positive. Then that means the velocity increase, so we have the positive A. And for the second part, if we check the, uh, the slope, that's a theta two, the th tangent theta two is negative. So the acceleration is smaller than zero. So the same thing, if we do the derivative of the VT curve, 
we get the instant acceleration. So that will be A equivalent to the derivative of velocity. That's acceleration. Okay, if we have the xt curve, not the vt curve, and can we get the acceleration? We know the v is the derivative of xt curve. So the acceleration will be the second derivative of xt curve. So second derivative is the curvature. of the xt curve. So if the curvature is positive in this one, this is a positive curvature, that means the speed is increasing. For the second part, the curvature is negative. Then that means the velocity goes down. Okay, so this is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Do you have any question? Okay, I want to spend two minutes talking about the homework. Uh, the homework is, um, the total point of the homework is 10 points. It's not 100 points. When Professor Stavola said the assignment and he didn't change the total point. So you will find that you get 10 out of 100. So uh, that, that makes sense. So the total is 10. So if you uh, finish all the problem and I will give you full credit. If you miss some problem, I will drop a little bit point uh, off. So this is um, I want to talk about today. And the homework is not uh, very difficult. And I find most of you um, get it right. So you can check the solution on the course site. And if you have question, you can stay with me in the office hour today. And I can answer you any question about the homework. And for the next Thursday, next Thursday, let me see. Hold on. Next Thursday, we don't have class. Week. Oh, yeah. So next Thursday, uh, 11th. Um, that's the China New Year's evening. And I'm going to drop the recitation. And um, I have a celebration with my family. So that day we don't have recitation, but I will record a video on that day. So uh, you don't have to um, get up earlier on Thursday. And uh, if you uh, want to learn some physics, you can click my YouTube channel. I will upload um, a recording video on Thursday. Um, also, on Thursday, we don't have uh, office hour on that day. So I'm going to move the office hour to the Tuesday, okay? R right after the second section at the same time, but on Tuesday, okay? So that's all. Thank you for coming. And I will see you on next Wednesday, on next Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.